For Woodlands and Nutrient Equine, with the uh, yearling sales commencing April 1 through to 3 this uh, Saturday and Sunday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday, and also, of course, don't forget the yearling parade for Woodlands on the Saturday. Mark Hughes joins me. Hello, Hughesy. Paulie, afternoon. Um, out in the salubrious surrounds of Doreen in uh, Gordon Rothica Territory. For those that um, want a little bit of a history lesson, this is Harness Racing Royalty, this uh, area, for the great Gordon Rothica. We're at um, Johnny Yeoman's place and Chris Yeoman's um, Homestead Farms and Cambrai, mate, in the background. A view right across to the Yarra Valley Ranges, mate. So uh, just for you, Cam. Cam always uh, he marvels at where we're going to be and that, but it is a beautiful setting, beautiful farm. How's the history around here? Oh, mate, this is, um, as I said, this is harness racing history here in this area, the Whittlesey, um, Doreen, Yarrambad area. Um, you know, you're talking about, you know, Gordon Rothica, the preeminent trainer and one of the most distinguished trainers in, um, in Victorian and Australian harness racing history, you know. Um, this is his area. I've been going around looking at some yearlings today, uh, mainly three colts, all by American Ideal. I actually saw another one on Saturday as well. Hasn't he got a, He's got an amazing draft of horses um, in the sale coming up. I think he's got 16, 12 of those are colts. Yep. He's got a full brother to Soho Tribeca. He's got a three-quarter brother to so- Soho Tribeca. He's got a horse there by, uh, out of Aston Villa. The depth of mares that he has got is just amazing, isn't it? Yeah, look, um, second season in Australia, so that's his crop that's um, at the sales um, next weekend, particularly in Victoria, where he stands. Um, 12 colts, 4 fillies, um, an amazing array of mares that he got. And he's look, the reality is he, he's entitled to great mares because he's a great stallion. So um, we look forward to seeing them on the weekend. We've seen three today, two here at uh, John's, um, prepared by Rachel. And we saw one at Juanita Breen's this morning as well. So um, he's got some very, very nice colts in the sale on the weekend. Juanita's is out of it, shows it up. There will be a pod, an interview going up with Juanita at some stage, probably tomorrow, the way I'm going for time, but that's okay. We don't worry about those things. Uh, the two here, though, the I'm smouldering, he just looks so much like Dad, doesn't he? Yeah, look, he looks so much like Dad. Um, it's the American ideal out of the better's delight, man, but my Godfather, if you put him beside his father, um, that'd be, um, they're the spit of each other. And then we have the other one, Life in the Fast Lane, who is just, watch him walk. He just, once, he just strides, doesn't he? Yeah, look, he's got a real presence about him. He's a very big unit, um, but gee, why he covers the ground and his walk, he walks with purpose, and he's a very laid-back individual, and he's a beautifully bred. He's a three-by-three three to um, uh, three diamonds on both sides of the page, um, the archetypical um, pedigree that people like to rave about. Um, that's what this cold is in on the weekend. And and it's an interesting thing because of the life sign, if you like, and the life sign cross, a lot of people probably, you know, here in Australia, Lifetime was much maligned, but amazing the job that he has done over there. And you get this this double cross of three with the three diamonds, as you said. Yeah, look, Lifetime was much maligned here. Um, however, as a broodmare sire in um, the States and in um, Canada, um, he's, there's been a lot of energy around him. He's done a great job. This horse, um, he's a he, he's a lovely colt. Yeah, he is in he is indeed uh, better to light. He's got a great draft. He's got four fillies in the sale. Um, the Colts sell themselves better a lot. We don't have to do a lot of selling there for those. The job that Better Salite is now doing in the broodmare barn, um, having dams out of you know, sorry horses by you know dams of Better Salite, just amazing, isn't it? Yeah, look, um, Better's is now he was the Australian broodmare sire of the year last year, um, and it's very rare that there's not a race meeting where he doesn't throw up as the broodmare sire, um, and he's just having such a wonderful run at that. Um, we expected that. Um, but you know, going forward, if you just got to have a better's delight mare in your uh, in your broodmare band, uh, lather up, um, first season sire standing here. Interesting little stat you said to me, uh, first season sire, and he topped the sale just recently in Tasmania with a beautiful horse prepared by Melissa Main down there in, in Tasmania. Uh, he's thrown a beautiful type of horse, isn't he? Yeah, look, he's a really good looking rooster as well, so we expect him to throw great types. He um, sold his weanling, sold really well in New Zealand in May last year. Um, very few first season size top sales he did um, in Tasmania for Melissa. Um, we like the horse a lot. Um, his first crop will roll in uh, North America through J- July and August. His horses are in the right barns in North America, which is a real key ingredient. He'll be in Ohio where they race for seriously good money. I encourage people to look at the lather ups on the weekend. There's three in the sale, but... He sold well in um, Sydney, returned four and a half times his service fee for people. So uh, he's a smoky mate, and we're very confident he's going to make it. Another one, Seaside. Yep. 
everyone's sitting up and having a look now, aren't they? They're like, uh, where'd these all come from? <laughs> Oh, look, there's always a slow burn on these stands, and we all understand that conservatively people do sit back and have a good look. Um, we realise that, and some people know they've got to change and go first, second season to these size. Seaside um, finished up in the all-age size in North America at the end of his three-year-old career. He was a leading three-year-old, sorry, ahead of Treacherous. Top three, four in the two-year-old size. He's off to a fly down here. I think he was second on the size list as we go to press today. He might have dropped down to third or fourth. But the Woodland size are in the top three of them in the top five leading two-year-old size in Australia so far this year. Lou, American Ideal and Seaside, mate. And they're going to have a fairly big say in two-year-old racing in this country going forward for a number of years. Um, we've said there before about Seaside. I've seen a couple of them. There's only a small handful in the draft. The numbers actually escape me at the minute. Yeah, there's only four. Two, two Colts, two fillies. Um, I've got a funny feeling that um, people who bred to him this year will make some serious money out of him in Melbourne. Yeah, I've seen one of the Colts um, through the videos I do. You don't have to be a rock nose. He's a beautiful Colt and well worth well worth a look. He's part of the Lower Long Farms um, draft. Sweet Lou, uh, he just keeps getting the job done year in, year out. He's just doing a brilliant job. He has horses like Spirit of St. Louis to two-year-olds, what you say, 52-year-old winners last yep. year, almost one a week, unheard of. Yeah, look, uh, 52-year-old winners last year in Australia, 11 so far this season. So, And people have got short memories. He had the two-year-old Colton Gelding pacer of the year in Australia last season, never ending in Perth. Bet has left the two-year-old filly. So Lou is going to have quite a number of winners going forward. He also presents that opportunity on the filly side with his maternal pedigree and his fraternal pedigree, for you to have a sweet Lou filly that if they it, be able to go to any side going forward. Yeah, he's that great outcross. He is. That's the reason we bought him, mate. Lou is a game changer in a lot of ways. A lot of people didn't believe it, but it's happening. Yep, it definitely will. Um, and then what the hell? Um, we said there in the uh, Juanita Breen interview, uh, he started the sail season off in New Zealand with the sail topping trotter, lot one, to come through under the hammer, and he sold for 100000 it had no futurities. It had nothing else. Everyone bought that horse on type and potential. Um, he's got a horse in America that's really starting to make some waves um, and they're starting to hit the ground here in Australia as well. Yeah, look, um, his um, oldest cropper, four-year-old in um, North America, the Mighty Hill, looks like a standout serious grand circuit trotter who's ripping it up in Ohio. His horses race for really good money in Ohio. He's had good, really good two-year-old and three-year-old depth there. Group one winner in his first crop in Australia. Leading three-year-old trotting sorry in New Zealand so far this season. So he's starting to tick a lot of boxes off not a lot of numbers. No, it's, it's absolutely enormous, which is what Woodlands do. And I wear, I wear the hat and the shirt, but that's, I mean, that's, there's no problems there and the jacket on a day like today. Um, just doing an exceptional job. You don't stand and you stay in every year. You make sure you get what you want, um, wait for the right horse. What will work in our market? Yeah, look, we've, um, we've been patient, but we look, we also understand that we've had some stains with great longevity, like Better's Delight and American Ideal, and, you know, they are going to become very irreplaceable in the not-too-distant future. But we believe we've replaced them with Seaside, and Lou and Lather Up will await the next one. Now, whether how far away the next one is, we don't know. But for us, it's quality, mate. Um, and quality quality um, gets results on the track. It's quality re results at the yearling sale. Um, people know that when they breed to one of our sires that they've been methodically researched, and we, and we go down the road and support them as well. So we're not relying on others to make our stay-ins. We help make them as well. Absolutely, mate. As the rain starts to tumble down, Johnny Yeomans is worried about the feed because we've had that many times we don't want to hold the guys up any more uh, than that. Yearling sale, as I said, starts Saturday the 1st of April through to the 3rd of April. The parade is on the Saturday. Horses will be arriving Thursday and Friday. We want people to get out there and inspect the draft. There are 46 uh, yearlings by Woodland Side Horses. 31 of those are Colts, I think is right, and 15 fillies. Uh, huge draft. As I said, American Idol's draft is just uh, ridiculous. It's, um, and we've seen three today. I saw a fourth one on Saturday, so they are some absolute standouts. I encourage people to get there and look at them, get to the parade, enjoy the festivities, but check out some of these high-quality draft of horses. Yeah, look, we encourage everyone to get there. I know a lot of people are arriving Friday afternoon with their yearlings, but get there at lunchtime on Saturday. We're putting on the food and drink, mate, as we have done at the Gold Coast and in Sydney. We're delighted to be part of this. I urge, like, this is the last sale for the season. This is the last opportunity for a lot of people. Um, there are some, there's some great quality stock going through this sale. Um, 
I encourage everybody to get there where they can, bid online, buy. You know, it's um, it's it, it's your last chance to get a really nice yearling in 2023. And if you haven't got your credit, contact the team at Nutrien Equine. Contact Gemma Smallman. Get your credit sorted. It is different to what it used to be. It has to be different. The industry needs to change, so we need to do things differently. Contact them. Don't say it's hard. It's not hard. This is Monday. This will be going up a bit later on this afternoon. It is not hard. Contact the team at Nutrien Equine. Get your credit. Get everything sorted. Rock up Saturday. Enjoy the festivities, the free drinks, the food, and the quality yearlings, and then start buying Saturday and, uh, Sunday and Monday and enjoy everything. Husey, thank you. I uh, look forward to seeing you on Friday night, but a few of the other people won't. Uh, Cam Bray's got to bring his own doggy bag, is that right? Yeah, he's got to bring his own doggy bag for dinner on Friday night. I'm sure he'll be there. Um, but, you yeah, know, looking forward to catching up socially with a few people Friday night. A couple of boys out of the Riverina. Um, Richo's coming down from um, Kyabram, so it'll be a nice little fill-up and a catch-up on the, the banks of the Yarra, mate. So I look forward to it. And you'll shout me a sparkling water? We'll shout you a sparkling water, mate. You are the ch- you and Cambrai between you are the cheapest shout um, in uh, Australasia. <laughs> he reckons he's going on a hunger strike until until Friday night, says so he can fill up. Oh, I'm sure he will be. That's why that's why he's bringing a doggy bag of it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very good.